Hello and welcome to GCSE Patterns in Food Supply and Demand. We're going to look at the, the idea of, of food supply, so a few definitions for you. Famine, that's a serious widespread so shortage of food. In the worst cases, it can lead to starvation and even death. Food insecurity, that's um, being without reliable access to sufficient quantities of affordable, nutritious food. And there's a shocking statistic on there that more than 800 million people live every day with hunger or food insecurity. Food security is the situation every country wants to be in when people at all times have access to sufficient, safe, nutritious food to maintain healthy and active lives. Okay, and uh, we've seen this before, but there's, there's definite patterns uh, and it's linked in with development. So uh, we've talked about their areas of deficit having food insecurity, areas of surplus having food security. Uh, the richest nations, your high income countries, um, in North America, across through Western Europe, large parts of Asia, um, um, other major nations like New Zealand um, and Australia, they, they easily consume uh, a, an ample amount of kilocalories from 2,600 up beyond 3,800. Okay? And in, in some cases, they're consuming excessive calories. Um, large parts of um, Central Africa, you can see down here, um, are consuming inadequate amounts of um, calories and actually consume less than the United Nations Department for Health recommended daily total. So those countries um, would suffer from um, a possibility of undernutrition, so not enough calories. Um, and some of them might have malnutrition as well. And that's where you might get enough calories, but you're not eating enough from the right uh, food groups. That ties in with this map on undernourishment. Okay. So you can see there it's very low across the richer nations and then across large parts of that sub-Saharan African belt um, we've got some very high levels of undernourishment and that has a massive human cost. And then in terms of where the food's produced, okay, um, you can see there um, you've got the population breakdown. I think that's the most interesting one to compare with. Um, Asia by far the biggest bar, followed by Africa. Um, and then uh, you've got uh, a smallish population in Central America and South America and North America. And then you've got the population of Europe there and Oceania at the top. Um, and you can see, you know, if you just took Europe, for, for example, um, we produce less fish and meat um, as a percentage compared to um, our population, but a lot more milk and milk products, a lot more meat produced compared to head of population, um, a lot more oil crops, a lot more wheat and a lot more cereal. Um, rice has an obvious pattern. Um, you know, a lot of the best rice growing areas in the world are in are in Asia. Um, so a lot of our rice comes from comes from Asia, um, and and so on. So, um, but there's clear patterns there that the the wealthier nations tend to produce more food than the percentage of their population, and that's because of the type of farming that takes place in those areas. That's highly mechanised, and often with monocultures, and um, having a lot of technology applied to the to the areas okay and then reasons for for changing consumption and increasing consumption okay the population's going up and that's that's just fact so um we crossed 7 billion in 2011 we're ha heading rapidly towards 8 billion and then um, some of the continental areas have quite high growth rates so africa's population has grown at 2.5 percent per annum okay oceana at 1.3 percent um so we've got quite high um, growth rates. The other positive thing to take out of this is that the amount of calories consumed by different types of countries has gone up. So um, as a globe, uh, the amount of calories has gone up. The wealthy countries has gone up. Even the lowest um, consumption areas like sub-Saharan Africa, which we looked at earlier, that's gone up over time as well. And then the last thing is that countries are developing economically. So um, wealthier countries tend to eat more meat, more dairy, um, and you can see that on this change in Chinese diets, which has has changed massively, um, you know they're eating less uh, cereals as a percentage of their diets, but the amount of animal products has gone up massively as China has developed. So there's a stat there in 1980, people in China consumed just 12 kilograms of meat. By 2015, it had gone up to 60 grams. Um, so changing economic development can have an impact on diet, and that has an impact on what food is produced. So in terms of tasks, you've got a video to watch here. It's very good. Um, 
answer a couple of questions there why are the food some f f countries food secure or insecure how can we improve it um, you can read this website page here then produce a bullet pointed list on that map that I've just talked through identify five countries with an atlas that have very high levels of undernourishment and five with very low write a paragraph on what the general pattern is and then you've got a table of stuff there to have a look at you can compare Africa with Europe in terms of how much is produced that's just um, a tabular version of the graph I showed you earlier and then complete the little graphic what why are we consuming more food using the information on uh, population size and growth and economic development as usual there's a worksheet for you to put your answers on in the boxes and um, the web page that goes with it is, is just there um, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it just a little a little joke for you what's the best way to burn vegetables roast them <laughs>